Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Conversations with Anne. Happy Wednesday. It's a beautiful day outside, blue skies. I'm happy to welcome a live audience today. I ask them to please not make funny faces at me. And don't stand behind me either doing this, OK? Because if you make funny faces at me, I'm going to make them right back at you. Anyway, welcome. So we had some crazy weather last night. Um, lucky us who live at Glen Meadow. Um, not lucky me, because I don't have any power. And I know many of the people that may normally join us don't have power. So maybe you're watching us on your cell phones. Uh, thank God for those cell phones, right? Um, but we are here at Glen Meadow. Thankfully, we have a generator that keeps us powered through all of these difficult weather occasions. And we also have a backup generator, so that's even better. So if the first one falls down, the backup pops in. So um, hopefully everyone's safe out there and hopefully people will get their power back soon so you can watch your soap operas. But I'm sure you watch other stuff too. So I'm gonna start and end with, um, I guess what I say, I'm kind of like a broken record, but I feel like I need to be a broken record. So um, there's two slides that I wanna show you. First, I wanna show you a headline from today's Republican newspaper, if we can get that up. So um, basically this headline states that, um, what does it say, I can't read. <laughs> Baker warns of reopening rollback. Thank you. Baker warns of reopening rollback. So I just, this is on the front page of the paper today, and, and it's just a, a really important reminder to all of us that while we open, and as we have followed the opening of Massachusetts all along, and, and kind of not exactly in order, um, actually trailing the reopening of Massachusetts, because we're extra cautious here and we have our vulnerable population. But as the governor says in this article, that um, you know, based on the results of tests, we may you know, have to roll back. Um, we hopefully will not have to do that, but that's why I'm opening with this today because it's an important reminder that um, reopening creates new risks. And as we do reopen here at Glen Meadow, which we certainly want to do, um, because we know quality of life for people who live here is extremely important, we also are being extremely cautious at the same time. And um, you may have recalled last week, we actually had a family member call in and he said, so based on all the things you're saying, why, are, why is Glen Meadow opening? Why are you opening yourselves up to visitors? And as I responded, it's not an easy answer, but I responded that we're always trying to balance the quality of life for people and the need to be with people, be with your friends and family, but at the same time also manage the health and safety of the community. So all of this takes, for lack of a better word, takes a village, it takes um, everyone's social responsibility. And I'm gonna focus right now on visitors um, because we have open to visitors and I'm glad that people are able to come. But I'm gonna also remind you respectfully that we've asked you to come during certain hours of the day. Those hours are between 1 p.m. and 8 p.m. I know not everyone is coming during those hours and of course I'm not gonna go around and you know, penalize you for that. But again, we're asking for you to be socially responsible and responsible uh, to take responsibility. So if you can visit during the hours that we ask, we ask you to do that. We also ask that you limit your visits to no more than an hour and no more than two people at a time. So I'm just reiterating iterating that because again, exposure, especially indoors, is where contact happens and where exposure happens. So the limited amount of time, uh, the limiting the amount of time that you spend with people is always gonna be the better bet. But again, it's a balancing act. Um, so the other thing, I, I was on a call, you know, I talked with a lot of colleagues who are in the same predicament and we're all dealing with the same situations. 
and one of them <clears throat> one on the call last friday said well we're not opening to visitors because we can't monitor people and how are we going to monitor people in their apartments and to me that's a little bit um big brothery because you are all adults and we don't expect that we need to have a camera on all of you to monitor what you're doing in your apartment right um, and it don't it, it, never definitely not going down that road but at the same time if you're visiting and you don't have a mask on while you're in that apartment that's really you know you're not actually following what we've asked you to do so you need to do as best you can when you do visit to maintain the six foot distance to wear the mask which i'm going to talk about again um, of course i know sometimes people are coming and they're eating together uh, of course you can't wear a mask when you're eating but you can remain six feet apart and that is going to be very important to continue to do that so the next um, piece that i wanted to bring up has to do with an email i got today that talks about um, why masks matter it's on the next slide so this basically this was sent out by the lab who does our tests and you know I'm bringing this up again because I still see even yesterday or as recently as today I got an email from a resident who said you know I was just sitting outside and someone came over to sit next to me and she took her mask off and she sat like this far away from me um, so again broken record please you you need to stay the six feet and you need to wear the mask um, at all times when you're when you're about the building and you're with other people but this this um, handout which I am going to post around actually talks about the fact that um, the possibility of transmission goes up by 70 percent if the person that has COVID by the way who may not even have symptoms experiences a healthy person who's actually wearing a mask so that covid infected person without a mask increases the possibility of transmission by 70 percent so even if the healthy person is wearing the mask and the other person isn't your transmission rate goes up by 70 percent so if that's not compelling the other two categories the possibility of transmission if the person with COVID is wearing the mask and the healthy person doesn't have a mask is only 5%. So there's even more compelling reason. And again, you may not know you have COVID. Um, you know, there's, there, you could be asymptomatic or, or have something else that isn't COVID and not know. Um, and then the last one, possibility of transmission if you're both wearing a mask even if you have covid goes down to 1.5 percent so that's why i'm saying it again um, i'm asking family members especially to be very mindful i have i just experienced yesterday a family member coming to pick up their mother going out in the car there was no mask on um, i said could you please put the mask on oh yes i will never put it back on and again we as staff don't want to be put in a situation where we're we're doing you know kind of feeling like we have to penalize people or be you know policing people but it's what's going to keep us healthy and so we just need everyone's cooperation with that and certainly um the way you wear the mask i've been through this a million times but i see plenty of people not wearing the mask properly wearing it down you know without you know over their nose which really isn't going to help you need to have it over the nose so i'm sorry to sound like a broken record but i do feel like it's my responsibility to keep reminding you especially as we continue to open so with that said um i uh have some good things to share with you number one many of you probably saw the the new outdoor furniture and I've heard good feedback about it. It looks very nice. Um, it's durable, it's lightweight. Um, we're able to shield, have more shielding from the sun. So if you look out on the terrace, we've actually been able to create more shade spots 
and we're also looking at getting some more shade for that terrace trellis area so that the the, the terrace can be really a nice place to be um, we are still we are ordering cushions i know i've gotten some comments about the armchairs don't have cushions they need cushions we are getting those um, they they are on order um, but they won't arrive for a couple of weeks so I'm really excited to say that we are going to start outdoor dining next August 11th, next Tuesday, I believe that is. And um, what we're going to do, uh, it's actually really cool what we're gonna do and I think it's gonna be pretty exciting. We're gonna do small group dining. So we're in the process. We've actually created a list of people. So in assisted living, we'll probably do everyone at once because we can accommodate everyone on the terrace safely. With independent living, we're gonna look at everyone. We kind of know people's patterns and who you like to dine with. So we're gonna try to, we're gonna create a list of people with small group dining. So we will start on Tuesday. There will be a special menu for the outdoors. We're gonna have um, wine, possibly a cocktail available um, with appetizers and a nice grill so it's going to be fun um, you are going to be able to get together with some friends but you're not going to be able to be on top of each other obviously and you are going to be eating together so it's not going to be it is going to be different than what we normally do but um, first of all we want to encourage outdoor dining that's just like the restaurant businesses they're they're really finding good success with outdoor dining and it's a very lovely concept. I mean, it's summertime in New England. It's usually not that hot later in the day. Again, we have shade. Um, so we're excited to get that started. We will have, so what you'll be hearing about as over the next couple of days is you will have a group that you'll be dining with. One of the reasons we're doing that is number one, we want you to be able to be with the people you are friendly with. But number two, if someone does come sick, come down ill, we have the able, ability to contact Trace. So God forbid, Merle, you get sick. Well, guess what? We're gonna go right to the people that you had dinner with that night and make sure they are tested and, and all the protocols are followed. Hopefully that's not gonna happen, but it is a responsible way to roll out. Um, and we are doing this slowly. Um, we're gonna do it for the month of August and see how it works. If the weather is not good, um, we will do, we will have the dining room set up. The terrace side dining room will be set up for indoor dining. We want to discourage that as much as possible. And we're not, if you say, well, I don't really want to eat outside tonight. It's too hot. It's either outside with that special menu or you're going to have your food delivered. And of course you have the option. I mean, no one's going to force you to eat outside. But if you decide you don't want to, then you'll have to do the order to your apartment. So that should be fun. Um, we're excited about it. Our staff uh, wants to make it nice for all of you. We want to thank you for your patience. We know when we, we are in the process of doing a survey. And by the way, just a reminder, those are all due back on Friday. So if you haven't completed your survey, either online or there's also a paper survey going around, please complete it so we can get your feedback. But we are hearing pretty strongly that um, one thing people are really missing is, is dining with their friends. So we want to try to get back to that as soon as possible. But again, we have to do it safely and we want to do it responsibly and we want to still make it a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to that next week. Um, some other things, uh, there is going to be a circus tomorrow. <laughs> the circus is coming to Glen Meadow. Uh, gosh, that brings back memories. I remember when I was a kid, the circus came to town, right? And it had the elephants and everything. Boy, I must be old. Um, but, but that was really cool when the circus came to town, right? Everything yeah, stopped. It parade, yeah, it was a parade. Yeah. Yeah, Ringling Brothers. Now I don't, there's really not circuses anymore except for Cirque du Soleil, I guess. Um, anyway, so we are gonna have a circus here. Hopefully it won't become a circus. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys can, you know, behave. Um, but it's gonna be fun. We're doing it in two shifts and 
I know the staff has really worked hard to communicate with residents because it is the first time we've had a like a large event other than we had the DJ but this is going to be a large large event for the whole community but again we have to maintain the social distancing and make sure we don't have too many people at a time so it's going to be all hands on deck all of the staff will be there to help um, we're going to have a fun time um, lots of junk food I understand <laughs> so if you don't like junk food you should eat before you come um, but it's it's going to be fun you never had a corn dog? Never. Really? Ah. Yeah. Well, tomorrow's your first time. Yes, it will. Yeah. So that'll be fun. And then, you know, as you see, the pattern here is we're trying to create some fun events for people. It's been, um, you know, I was looking back on some of the pictures, and actually, when this all first started, we actually had snow on the ground. And we're still talking about this covid and it's august mid-august and we're still talking about it and it's not going away so um but the good news is we can start offering some fun events we are planning to do a rodeo as well um everyone's gonna have to wear their cowboy hats and their their cowboy boots and their studs and all the all of that studs or spurs or whatever they're called not studs um, um but more on that to come so that should be another fun event and that's that's really what we're trying to do is create some fun and some laughter and i don't know if Miriam grimes if you're watching but um we actually have a professional clown who lives here so marion i hope i'm not outing you um i hope you'll be able to join us um i hope you'll be be able to come and and show us some tricks um so that's happening um, some other things, I get a lot of questions about cards, games. Uh, people love to play cards here. So we are, um, first of all, I want to remind everyone, if you have a laptop, there's a whole bunch of apps uh, on, you know, you can purchase apps or a lot of apps are free. You can download apps that you can play any kinds of cards. And you can also play with partners. So if you need any help with that, Patrick told me he'd be happy to direct you to the right spot and he'd be happy to help you download those. So that's one thing you can do where you really have very limited exposure. We are having someone come in and look at some plexiglass for us to see whether plexiglass on some of the tables would allow us to create a safe environment for cards. I can't guarantee that that's going to be okay, um, but we are going to try it because I know people really want to play cards and it's probably not the same playing on a computer if you're used to playing with a group of people. But what I do want to kind of emphasize is that just like I said with the dining, these things are going to have to be different and card games are going to have to be different even if we do get back to them it's it's going to have to be a different way that we do things until this virus is is gone um so with that said we are continuing to explore different options around that and i certainly hear from people every day when are the cards coming back um and I'll keep saying the same thing. So if you want to ask me again, you can. But I'm, I just want you to know we're, we're continuing to explore other options for you. Um, I've also gotten questions about the store. So um, I talked to our, our governor, Bill Burroughs. I think he's the governor, right? I always get him mixed up with Seymour. Right, Bill, you're the governor. Um, who actually opened the store um, has been his baby for many years he's no longer uh, involved in the store and he shares with me that many of the people who volunteered to work in the store um, really aren't anxious to get back to working in the store so <clears throat> I'm just gonna say that it doesn't mean at some point you know we can't reopen the store but it is staffed by volunteers and it's staffed by people, you know, who live here. So if that's something, you know, people are really interested in getting back moving, then we'd have to kind of relook at that. And I'm happy to help you explore that. But in the meantime, 
um, the store will not be open until further notice until we can figure out another way to do the store with that said um, we are encouraging families if as much as possible if you can do the shopping for residents if they can't do it on their own and we are still encouraging people not to go out although we are offering transportation um, to stores we are encouraging to to stay out of public venues as much as you can um, so if your family is nearby and they can shop there's ways to down you know there's all kinds of delivery options now with even if you don't have family we can help you have the items delivered we are helping uh, you know Megan Reynolds has been helping with um, shopping but we'd like to pull back on that because you know we don't we you know she has other things that are important for her to be doing so although we're certainly happy to help with that we'd like to start um, pulling back from us doing a lot of the shopping um, and having you either order it online or have your family or you know go on your own if, if that's your choice although we are discouraging that um, I want to say something about hot spots as well so um, we are I'm just going to remind everyone if you're visiting that you do need to check in at the front desk at the screening desk and there is a form that we ask you to fill out and we ask you to really take that seriously and be honest and this is also for our staff um, you know there is an advisory in place a travel advisory that's been in place now for for a couple of weeks and the governor has said uh, for Massachusetts that anyone with the exception of Connecticut Hawaii New York New Jersey New Hampshire Vermont and Maine either have to quarantine when they come here or they have to have a negative test within 72 hours of arriving so that actually Rhode Island I didn't mention Rhode Island because today Rhode Island is actually being taken off the list as approved because Rhode Island has had an uptake in um, cases unfortunately Rhode Island is a nice place to visit but um, right now if you're coming here to visit from Rhode Island you're not supposed to be coming for an extended period of time and you need to produce a negative test or you need to quarantine um, oh I did I say Connecticut Connecticut is also um, allowed so anyone living in Connecticut it's fine so um, but that said going back to this you know at any time we can be back to where Rhode Island is and we just don't want to be there so um, we continue to, to do testing we continue to monitor people who may have had exposure if, if you feel that you've been exposed so again as as visitors come in their visitors may you know find out that they either have been exposed or they have a positive test we need to know that right away um, because then we have to take the right action so we continue to have tests available to our staff and to our residents we continue fingers crossed um, we have not had any positive cases since the end of April so we want to keep that trend going but that's only going to happen with everyone's cooperation so um, I just want to say thank you for that um, we can't be anywhere without everyone working together including our staff so if someone wants to go to Disney World that's fine but if you want to come back to work you can't come back to work unless you've had a negative test or you are going to quarantine for another 10 days and it it hits close to home because it is it is vacation time and you know we all want to go away but and you can go away you just have to be safe about it so um, and I know I also saw something in this article with Governor Baker he's also looking at large group events it seems like the number of large group events has increased which also it's summertime people are having parties people want to get together with family and friends but again those big events can be exposed events they can expose you to to the virus so um, we are discouraging our residents from attending any large events like that we will continue to discourage that because you're just opening yourself up um, if you do go away 
for a visit if it's 24 hours or more we will ask you to be tested when you come back um, as well as um, if you uh, quarantine until the test result comes back and that's pretty much a standard protocol for for any community um, at least for now so I think I have addressed everything I wanted to um, I did say yeah no no new cases yay that's great that's really great um, everyone's been healthy um, so we're we're really happy to say that and we want to continue to say that I want to show up here every week and say the same thing I want to sound like a broken record yeah we're we're safe we're we're clean no COVID <clears throat> so I'm going to open it up for questions and maybe some answers um, if you have any answers those are also always welcome three five 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 nine one zero Do you have any question? I don't. I have a comment. Comment. My brother was here on Saturday, and he came up and he was very surprised that nobody asked if they traveled anywhere. Okay, let me address that in a moment. Hi, Joan. Hey, Ann. Hey. Uh, I'm just going to turn this sound off. So I just have a question about, uh, two questions actually. One about next Tuesday in the outdoor dining. Mm -hmm. Now, is that Tuesday only or is that no, Tuesday? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. So the di outdoor dining will start on Tuesday with small groups. So you will hear from us when your day is and when you're assigned and what group you're assigned to, okay? So it starts on Tuesday. It doesn't mean you're going to be dining out on Tuesday. So seven days a week. So one day of the week, you will be offered the option of dining out, outside. Okay? Now, Sounds with that good. said, I also want to, I was saying to one of the staff today, there's no one to say you can't take your lunch outside and, and eat. You know, if you want to go out to the terrace or you want to go have dinner with a friend outside, you can bring it with you, you know, at least until we start this. Well, that's not until, but lunchtime, uh, we're, no one will be there. So if you want to do that on your own, we're not discouraging people from doing that. Um, but this is, this is what we're setting up starting on Tuesday. So it's going to be one day a week only for, for each group. And that'll be for the month of August, and then we'll reevaluate. Sounds good. But my second question is uh, testing. Yes. Do I recall your saying last week that the tests you have on hand are the tests that take maybe seven to ten? Yeah, days? you have a good That's memory. I knew you were going to catch me on something, Joan. So, so we. I didn't try to do that. <laughs> I know you didn't. So we have, um, as you can imagine. There's a lot of competition with these labs who are doing the testing and the whole country is looking for labs to test. So we, we have had, it, um, our turnaround time has increased with the lab that we're working with, but we've received assurances from them that they're working on it and they understand that if they can't improve the response time, we're gonna go somewhere else. So, um, we we're in daily communication with them and they they really value us as customer and when we started with them you know the turnaround time was very good and they promised us that they will get back to that 24 to well probably never 24 hours but 48 to 72 hours and so the time lag it, there has been a larger time lag unfortunately um, but we're we're trusting that they're going to improve that We've also reached out to other labs. Um, Bay State, for example, uh, they will not give us tests. Um, we've, we've talked to other labs. There's another lab out in Washington State. You know, it's just there's a lot of competition right now. But I was also on a webinar yesterday, and they had people 
uh, representing very large senior living communities and they obviously you know things are going to get better testing is going to get more accurate and there's going to become as time goes on these labs are going to get up to capacity so you know i'd like to be positive about this that it's only going to it's going to get better um it's right now it's just this major push and as as they perfect the process and as more labs develop more capacity we will have a better turnaround time i'm confident of that but you're right joan i did say that and it's the reality is um that's just the way it is well i'm very impressed that i could remember that <laughs> so am i thanks Anne. thank you so Bye -bye. we had a question from the audience also about um do you want to say what your question was Oh, oh, your comment. So, so we'll remind the screeners, but on this screening form, there is a question about travel. And it's very general. It says, are you in compliance with Massachusetts travel advisory issued by the governor? So we can make sure that staff reiterate that. Thank you, Carol. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, Ann. Uh, B and I uh, had a wonderful time in uh, on the Cape. Oh, good. And most everyone we saw was wearing a mask, except uh, when eating. Good. And speaking of eating, uh, we note that all the restaurants allow six people to dine together. And we're wondering whether this applies to to people other than in restaurants like us that's an excellent question jay so the difference and if you just to jay is saying that in restaurants i'm having a lot of feedback is that <clears throat> okay can you can you move further away from the tv or turn it down i can shut it down Thank you. That's much better. Um, so the difference between restaurants and a place like Glen Meadow is I'm most likely going to go to a restaurant with people I live with or people I'm with in contact with every day. Here, so my family, right? Um, here it's different because you're going to be dining with people who you're not with. It, you know, they're not your family. And um, so we're going to have different requirements regarding the dining. We're not going to be able to model exactly what the restaurants are doing, which means you will have to have, you know, as much distance as possible. We'll, we'll figure that out, but we're, we're going, we are going to create distance between you. So it's not going to be, you know, like you might see in a restaurant. Okay. Well, uh, just thought I'd bring it up, but it's a great question. You know, I wish we had a magic wand. Um, <laughs> I, saw, I have a crystal ball now, thanks to Bill Burroughs, but um, I don't have a magic wand yet. So uh, one day we'll have a magic wand and everything will be fine, right? That's okay. the dream. We keep on dreaming. But welcome well, back. It's nice to have well, you back. Man. Hello. Who is this? Hello. Hi, Ann. It's Aaron Mendelson. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Um, and I was wondering if uh, for card players, if all four card players wore plexiglass masks, could they then play cards? So um, Aaron is a very smart man. He's bringing up an idea about card playing and said if everyone wore a plexiglass, you're talking about a face covering, like the, the plexiglass face coverings that we have? Is that what you're referring to, Aaron? Yes, yes. And you can, you can, also, you can also put a regular mask underneath it. Right. <laughs> it's worth exploring. 
Let's um, I'll throw that out to our epidemiologist and see what she says. Okay. Okay. Great. I didn't know you were a card thank player. You, thank you. Are you a card player? I'm not. I didn't think so. But my significant other. Is. Uh, okay. There you go. Your your significant other is important. So let me explore that. Good idea. They're not the funnest Thank things you. to wear. I mean, just so you know, they're they're pretty hot. They get a little warm, and with the mask and everything, they're not the most comfortable things. But it's certainly an option to look at. Yeah, and if you don't play for hours, you know, right? It might be okay. Right. All right. So let's take a we'll take a look at that. Thank you, Aaron. Anything? Great. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> hey, Seymour. Hey, Seymour. Hi. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> two things. First, I, I, I heartily agree with Aaron. <clears throat> if those masks were available, anybody interested would be more than happy to buy them. And, and, you know, we could have our own mask, and that could be done very nicely. And the other thing is in, involving the store. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's pitiful that we lose that little gem. Mm -hmm. uh, people really enjoyed having it, and I know that uh, I was particularly involved when we first moved here, uh, mm -hmm. and I would, with all due respect to Bill, you know, I, I think if enough of the people involved were be, be, be willing to work, that I, I think we should consider reopening it. Because okay. a lot of residents used to buy a lot of things there. So thank you, Seymour. So Seymour, uh, two things, if you didn't hear him, one had to do with, you know, he wants us to explore Aaron's recommendation. The, um, just so I, I want to just be clear, those, those plexiglass, those are actually, we have the shields, we have stock for staff. Um, I don't know what the availability of those, they were very hard to get in the beginning of COVID. Um, but I, I hear you, and, and maybe if there's, a, if there's enough supply um, and we can have access to them and people would want to purchase one, if that seems like an option, then we can certainly pursue it. The other thing that um, Seymour brought up is the store and that the store is a hidden gem and that I know a lot of people, including Seymour, were involved with the opening of the store. The difference is times have changed. Um, we have to remember the people that are you working in the store are, you know, our own residents who may have their own underlying health conditions and may, you know, not want to put themselves in that situation where they're exposed to more people. The other thing is if we do go back to the store, and again, that's, residents can rally around this if you like, and if you want to get you know some thoughts together about reopening the reality is the 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 number of people allowed in that store are going to it's going to be extremely limited i would say no more than one person at a time people would have to wait outside you'd have to be six feet apart so there is some administration that's involved just like if you go to the store now in long meadow their number there's only a certain number of people that can go into a store at any given time and it's that's the store we have is pretty small compared to some of the larger stores in in our area so we'd have to take that all into consideration but at the same time if if this is something people really want you know i want to encourage you to to get together and talk about it as long as you're six feet apart and have a mask on Linda, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to have you just reiterate for the dining. Yes. At lunchtime, you're welcome to bring your lunch outside. Yes. But dining is going to be the entire group in a percentage 
will be invited each of the seven nights of the week. So he wants to the Master of Communications is asking me to clarify the dining. <laughs> Thank you. So we are going to continue the room service dining. That's for the majority of our population. Seven days a week, we will be offering outdoor dining to a group of people, a small group of people, probably no more than 20 people at a time, outside in the terraceite garden. So you will be assigned a day of the week and you will be assigned a group. It's not going to be like, oh, I, wanna, I only want to eat with so-and-so. We're going to have to control this because it's the only way to make it work. If we have everyone weighing in, well, I only want to sit with so-and-so, it's not going to work. So it will be, you'll have the opportunity in the month of August to dine outside um, at an assigned time of the week uh, with an assigned group. And there will be a special menu for that evening. So we'll have a special menu for the week. So for example, one week, the, the outdoor menu will be sirloin tips on the grill, for example. Um, but the, that will be separate from what's offered to people in the apartments. Lunch remains the same. If you, I do encourage you, because outdoors is best and it is beautiful outside, if you'd like to take your lunch outside with a friend, feel free to do that. And it's especially comfortable in the terrace side now because we have the tables. And as long as you're six feet apart and you're you know, doing the right things, we encourage you to do that. Thank you, Linda. Was that clear? Yes, we're gonna we're gonna have to put tables together when we do the dining because they are they are small. They're four by four. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, they are. So you have to be very conscious of the fact that they're not very large tables. Again, the plexiglass dividers would work. The plexiglass dividers. So we do have someone coming out like I said, uh, who makes the plexiglass. So that's a great point. We, could, we can talk to him about that. Good idea, especially outside. I'd like to own stock in a plexiglass. I know. Good time to own, stocks in plex own stock in plexiglass. Hello, it's, who is this, please? Uh, this is Millie Bader. Hi, Millie. Uh, I wondered if... Uh, I wondered if it was possible to order things from the store and have them delivered to your apartment. Um, you can still order things from the store. You have to go through Megan Reynolds. But in the meantime, if your family, because I see your daughter visits quite often, if she could bring it, that's even better. Yeah. Because we're trying to free Megan up to do some other important things that she does. So if your family's able to bring items, that's even better. Yeah, well, she does that. <laughs> okay. But I just wondered in an emergency, you needed something in a hurry or something. If, uh, we, do have, um, we do have some stock in items in the store. I can't tell you exactly what is available in the store. Um, right. I know we have some items like... Um, depends and things like that. I don't know what else we have yeah. in there. Okay. But certainly you can ask Megan or just call the concierge, Millie, if you need something. Okay. And we'll get it for you. Well, thank you kindly. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. You started to say there's a question on there about travel. Oh, so um, Carol was asking about the questionnaire. So when, when visitors do come, there is a questionnaire that asks, are you in compliance with the Massachusetts Travel Advisory issued by the governor on August 1st? So we are asking visitors that question. I don't so think to, he said he had to fill anything out. Okay, well, he... He should. Everyone who comes to visit needs to check in at the screening desk, which is right in the lobby. Okay, ask him if he filled something out. We can actually go and look. I'll ask him if he filled 
If you give me his name, I'll go and look. Because we keep a copy. They have no power where they are. Okay. Yeah, I know. But Connecticut's okay. Yeah, I know. Right now. Oh, yeah. So we just ask people to, you know, get know what the advisories are. If you don't know, we can we can tell you. But we just ask, you know, please do check in because our staff. We eventually will have a um, automated system for doing that check in. But for at least until the month of August, we'll be doing it with the staff checking people. If he went to Maine and had to bring a, t a negative test, would that be good for here? As long as it's 72 hours. Oh, okay. Because I, I did the same thing and I had to have a test. But it has to be within 72 oh, hours. Because you know, yeah. tests can good. change. All right, so um, I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you all for joining. Uh, I wish you healthy, happy, wonderful uh, rest of the week. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all next week. Oh, Seymour, you want to know? Seymour? Yes, it is I again. I'm a little confused. This woman that just asked you, and you had told her about things in the store. Mm -hmm. But what good is that if she can't get in there? No, she asked if she could order something from the store. And I said if she wanted to order well, something, who, yeah. she would call Megan Reynolds for now. If it's an emergency. Oh, the outdoor store, not no, no. our store. Well, there are some, yeah, we'll oh. get, there are some items in the store. <laughs> but, but the point is if if she needs something in an emergency we'll get it for her but we do encourage family members to bring items so that we can free up our staff as much as we can does that make sense we can talk offline Seymour if it's still not clear all right I'll call you Bye bye. Bye bye. I think he has his TV. All right. So with that said, have a great week, everyone. I'll see you all next week. Stay safe.